within chapter 2, there are some other uh, sections of chapter 2 that you will run across on an exam, but it may be one out of 100 questions, so I'm just going to ignore them, all right? These, however, I guarantee you will see on your exam. So write this stuff down, okay? Article 210, branch circuit rules and requirements. We talked about that just a minute ago. I gave you an example of two small appliance loads required, right? One laundry uh, load required a branch circuit and one uh, branch circuit for every bathroom that's included in the house. Those are the things that you'll find. You'll also find the rules for uh, GFCI installation, what areas have to have GFCIs. Uh, Article 210.8 and then Article 210.18 or 19, which is your ARC fault uh, rules and requirements, okay? Article 215 is your feeders. Uh, 220 is specific calculations. Heavy, heavy, heavy on 220. You've got to know 220. We'll go through it until you're sick of it. You'll know it like the back of your hand when you leave here today. And uh, it'll actually be useful for you. And it's a good tool to know for your trade, you know, to learn it for uh, sizing uh, services and loads and that type of thing. Article 225, outside circuits and feeders. Article 230, which is services. Oftentimes, you'll see test questions that have uh, references to both of these, and it's a two-part lookup question where you have to look up an outside service issue, right? So you'll have to ref uh, refer to both articles in order to answer that question. And those types of questions will be the ones that we talked about earlier that count for more than just a half a point. They may count for a half a point for this and a half a point for that. So you may actually have a full point or a point and a half for a question like that. And Article 240 is your overcurrent protecting devices. That's your breakers, circuit breakers, and fuses. And Article 250, which is your grounding. You're going to have quite a few grounding questions that uh, separately derive system category that you saw up there uh, early on uh, for the PSI website. That actually has a lot to do with grounding. You'll see separately derived system grounding rules and procedures uh, set out and stipulated. A separately derived system, for those of you that aren't clear on that, is a service that is separated from another service and has to, has to by its own definition, have its own grounding and bonding rules because it is separated from another service. A transformer is a perfect example of a separately derived system. When you transform a, a voltage class from 480 down to 240 volt, you're taking two windings, two coils, and you guys know all this from your electrical theory and your classes and stuff like that, so this isn't anything new to you. But you've got your two windings that are separated around a core, and that inductive uh, reactance between the, the primary side and the secondary side is what causes that voltage to step down, correct? Well, that's physically separated from each other. There are no uh, uh, mechanical connections between the two. So if you have the primary side bonded and grounded properly, but you don't have the secondary side bonded and grounded properly, and somebody has an issue, they could get hurt. So that's that second part, or those are two separately derived sister, uh, services. So you have to have rules for both of those, and that's what that is. A generator is a great example of a separately derived system because it is a generator of electricity that's not connected physically to the primary uh, side. Uh, <clears throat> and all the rules, most of the rules that you see for separately derived systems are going to be grounded and bonded.